Hey what's up guys welcome back to my Flutter advanced topics tutorial and in this video we are going to talk about asynchronous programming so um, many of the guys or the developers uh, who are like uh, starting with Dart or any uh, similar programming language are always confused about the synchronous programming model and the asynchronous programming model so that's what I will try to explain in this video so we'll start with synchronous program execution so um, in a synchronous program model uh, the program is executed line by line one at a time okay and when a function is called the program execution has to wait until the function returns and then it continues off with the next line so uh, let's try to uh, see this with the example so let's say we have this uh, program where we have these four lines and on the second line we have some uh, process or you can say that we are calling a function which is something which which will take some time so maybe uh, it can be a database call suppose you are fetching something from a database and it can take time so what happens in a synchronous programming model uh, let's see so um, our first line will be executed so um, this green uh, denotes that this line has been executed then um, our compiler will go to the second line and then it will call the function and because it will take some time so you can see that is taking some time let's say four seconds and by that time our program will be blocked and then it will move to the uh, third line and then this four and this is how it will end so as you as you can see here that on the second line um, when we call that function which can be any process or any function where we are doing some time consuming process so let's say it, it is taking as of now four seconds but it can take even more than that and by that time it blocks our program and that is not good uh, for our end user so to avoid this kind of uh, problems we have something called asynchronous program model where when a function is called program execution continues to the next line without waiting for the function to complete that means um, if let's say uh, I have something which is taking some time then uh, my program will not uh, wait for it to complete rather it will move to the next line and when that particular program or that particular function is completed then it will go back to that okay let's see this uh, by the same example so as you can see this is kind of same first line executed but second uh, now this uh, second line or the second function uh, on the second line uh, the first function on the second line has a callback okay so what will happen it will not stop here so as you can see it does not take any time it moved to fourth then uh, it moved to third then fourth line and then once that particular process or this function is completed then it will go to that particular callback so we will understand this by an example because we are focusing on our synchronous programming so I will show you uh, if you don't know how it works in a flutter program so basically uh, what is the advantage so uh, the difference between asynchronous and synchronous programming is that this asynchronous programming improves the responsiveness of your program so uh, if you talk about real world example then you can uh, see that when you are browsing suppose YouTube or something you can download the content like uh, there's a download offline option but by that time you can continue watching your video and you can do other stuff as well so that's possible because of uh, the asynchronous programming model because that uh, downloading stuff is not blocking anything similarly uh, when you are browsing web then you can do a lot of things all together and you don't have to wait for something to complete so uh, let's see how we can do it in our flutter program so as you can see we have a simple flutter app okay and that's not doing that much it's just having a button in the center and it is lit, it is saying just call okay so let me just give it some style as well um, I'm just giving it a color of white okay and it is looking much better now let's say uh, we have a method here maybe let's make a method here void call okay and uh, we will call this method using this button so on the on pressed of this button we can use this call and in this void call method let's say um, as we see in the slides that we had four lines of execution and uh, we had four lines which we wanted to execute so here let's say my first line is doing something 
let's say it is uh, executing method one or anything so i'm just uh, just for the demonstration purpose i am writing this print statement otherwise and on this second line because there was some fetching with the database or something so let's uh, let's say uh, i am calling here method two which is not yet available so we will do that and then let's say we have uh, a method three let's say uh, let me let's make it three okay we let me just improve the font size as well because okay now we have method three then uh, let's say after that we have method four okay and yeah that will work okay now let's make another method which will be this method two and here let's say i am printing something method uh, let's say two and uh, one second guys yeah and let's say now i want to run this program so i will press this call button and let's see the method of execution so one two three four as you can see but because it it happened because this method two is not blocking as of now so but let's say if it blocks okay if it is taking some time here let's say more than two seconds or more than five seconds or anything then our program can um like let, it, it can block okay or your ui will not respond or you can see something wh which is in uh, very popular in android which is um, your app is not responding something like that so to avoid that we have something called future or you can say async and await so both are the terms of uh, uh, using asynchronous programming so future is basically not uh, something it is just like uh, uh, a promise so let me just uh, um, show you let's say we had something called here future okay and uh, delayed so basically what i'm going to show you is that this program will be delayed by or this uh, line will be uh, delayed by this particular time so let's say duration we gave it let's say four seconds okay and after four seconds what we want to do we want to uh, let's say print here method 2 okay so now because with the help of this future our program will not uh, uh, block itself it will so it will execute this method 1 then it will go to method 2 and it will see that this is taking some time a uh, 4 seconds maybe so it will not wait there it will just go to method 3 and then 4 and then once it com this method 2 completes its execution then it will print this method 2 okay so let's let's try to run this let's try to run this uh, now by pressing this call button so i'll press this call and you can see method one three four and after four seconds you will see this method two okay so this is how you will not block your program using futures so future is basically a promise so let's say uh, if you go to a restaurant and you order a pizza there okay and the, a guy will come and uh, will take your order and because the pizza process will take some time okay so by that time this guy will not wait for your pizza uh, to uh, so uh, it, this guy is not gonna wait for your pizza um, process to get completed rather it he will go to the next uh, uh, the next client or the next person to ask for their order so he's not gonna wait for any order and as soon as your order will be completed he will take the pizza to you okay or he will ask you to come for taking that pizza so this is how future also works future gives you promise so it is a situation uh, like a pending status the status of future is always pending once so it can complete with a failure or a success so this future is a, like a promise that okay you came to my method which is method 2 i won't disappoint you i will give you something once i will have something okay so you can continue with your work so you continues with your method 3 and method 4 and when there is the task is done with method 2 he will just give you this uh, method to print or whatever you are doing here so this is how it works the second approach is a sing and await which is kind of uh, very similar to future but it, it can be useful when you don't want your code to look uh, like messy uh, you want uh, that clean cleanliness in your code and you want your program to be very clear so you can use async and await so let me just show you how you can achieve that so let's say uh, if i just remove this print from here 
and just paste it here so what will happen so let me just uh, run this call and you can see everything executed very smoothly because this delay um, didn't happen and uh, because it is not waiting here so it executed this print method too which which we didn't want okay so what we can do we can just say here a sync and we can say here await so a um, lot of people have this misconception that this await means that program will wait here or your compiler will wait here and then it will move to the next line this is not how it works let me just demonstrate you so now if I will run this program let me just clear this and let's press this call button then you can see oh, let me just uh, <clears throat> do a hot reload and now let's press this button then you can see method 1 3 and 4 now it is waiting for uh, this print method 2 statement so what's actually happening let me just clear this again so how this will happen so first of all this print method 1 will be executed okay then it will go to method 2 okay and then it will go to this line number 31 okay and it is saying await okay so the control will go back to this call method and now it will print method 3 okay and then it will print method 4 and as soon as this await will be completed then our control will go back to here line number 33 and then it will print method 2 which is so what we can also say that this is a kind of callback okay so uh, this method 2 is actually not a single method or you can say this is divided in two parts okay so this is a part 1 which will be executed uh, when method 2 will be called and then we have a part 2 which is after this uh, part 1 and this will be executed once we will have something out of this future or out of this part 1 so this is kind of a callback which will be done when we will have something with this future it can be a success or failure that 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 is totally a uh, different kind of stuff but uh, wh whatever we will get it it will move to this line okay so let's say um, now let's execute it and uh, we will debug it also so um, let's do one thing so um, let's stop this program and let's debug it and run it in debug mode and then we can see how it actually works so just for your understanding I am putting this uh, breakpoints everywhere although I don't have to but let's see so um, so basically this await does not mean that your compiler will be stuck here it will go back and then it will come here again when this particular await uh, stuff will be done so let's press this call now you can see we are on print 1 now we will move to method 2 then we will come to method 2 and now let me just make a breakpoint there also now let's press this and now you can see this code of execution this particular portion is not yet executed and our cursor is now on line number 26 and now it will move to sec uh, fourth method and now after doing all this stuff this method is done now there will be a callback after some time let's uh, do that let's go out of it and now you can see we are on line number 37 after four seconds and this is how it's done so this is how this future or async await works okay you don't have to this is just for explanation that uh, this is not about future this is just about that it is taking some time this can be anything fetching something from database or doing a network or anything so this is just for demonstration so i hope you have a uh, very good understanding about synchronous and asynchronous model now and you know how to use future and async await so that's it about this video i hope you enjoyed the video if you like uh, this uh, flutter advanced topic then please do subscribe to the channel and also press the bell icon to get future updates also like this video as well and uh, join our let's flutter group on facebook if you have more questions and uh, you can also check out my github repository for more content more open source projects so that's it guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye bye take care